So I'm Fred Docavello, represent the paper Frame-Based Annotation of Multimodal Corpora, Tracking Asynchronous in Meaning Construction that I wrote with my friends and research partners, uh, Marcelo Vidigiano, Alexandre Diniz da Costa, Edi Matos, and Thiago Torrente from FrameNet Brazil at Federal University of Rio de Fora. Uh, it's been almost 10 years since the FrameNet Brazil lab has been engaged in developing resources and applications for tourism using frames and construction drama. And about three years ago, we started working to make FrameNet Brazil able to also conduct multimodal analysis. The hypothesis that we came to is that in a similar way to the way in which words in a sentence evoke frames and organize their elements in the syntactic lo locality, visual elements in video may evoke frames and organize their elements on the screen or work complementarily with the frame evocation patterns of the sentence narrated simultaneously to the appearance on screen and providing them different profiling and perspective options for meaning construction. So to make this move in the direction of multimodal analysis, we started looking for the state of the art in computational processing of multimodal communication. And what we found is that multimodal analysis have been growing in importance with several approaches to both cognitive linguistics and natural language understanding. But the integration of natural language processing and vision processing is still in progress. We see successful uh, works in developing theories, models, some systems, but usually uh, when these areas, uh, vision and NLP, are separate. When we have integration, uh, what we see most is descriptions of static scenes or object concepts. And we also find interesting work on linking video with descriptive text or audio. Finally, we find many studies in multimodal communication that are interested in gesture analysis in multimodal corpora. And in this case, I highlight the research conducted by the Red Hand Lab with Francis Steen and Mark Turner, to which I have been working uh, for a year here in Cleveland. So uh, considering all this, FrameNet Brazil goes in the direction of a complementary approach to the works. We have been working on the establishment of fine-grained based, uh, frame-based relations between the audio and video modalities in kinds of more complex compositions. As a start point, we took the system developed by Neo Khan to evaluate the relation expressed by audio and video in our select corpus. This system is based in a parallel architecture of language and used by Khan mainly to study comics and graphic novels, so visual narratives in general. He focused on how grammar and meaning coalesces in uh, multimodal interactions. The, his classification evaluates the presence or absence of grammar structure in each of the modalities and the presence of absence of semantic dominance by one of the modalities, as you can see in this uh, scheme. In our study, we conclude that the TV show we analyzed, uh, the audio is the one who plays the controlling role to establish meaning. Um, it is a coherent framework, but it does not incorporate fine-grained semantics, and this FrameNet can do. So FrameNet Brazil can have been working to tackle the interrelations and interactions between modalities and its components. One thing that helps a lot is that it's been a while since FrameNet Brazil has been working on improving the granularity of its representations. Our works have been focused on enriching the database structure 
First, with the traditional frame-to-frame -frame relation that many, almost maybe all internets, uh, frame nets do, but also developing relations between frame elements and frames. What we do is linking frame elements to frames with license the lexical items that typically instantiate those elements. So, as an example here, uh, the frame element tourist in the touring frame is linked via uh, a frame element to frame relation to the people by leisure activity frame. And another relation that we have implemented in FrameNet Brazil is that uh, one that connects core frame elements to non-core frame elements in the same frame. And this uh, occurs when the non-core can act as a metonymic substitute for the core. Another group of relations developed by FrameNet Brazil holds between values. It's inspired by qualia roles based on the categorization proposed by Pustajovsks. And although frame to frame and frame element to frame relations already provide a fine grained semantic representation, they are unable to capture differences in the semantics of a group of lexical units within one same frame. And these differences are very relevant for the semantic representation of texts. So, qualia roles emerged as uh, characteristics or different possible context prediction modes of a lexical item. As quoted here, they indicate a single aspect of a word's meaning, defined on the basis of the relation between the concept expressed by the word and another concept that the word evokes. There are four main qualia roles. The formal is the relation that distinguishes an entity within a larger domain. It works like a taxonomic categorization, then includes characteristics like orientation, shape, dimensions, color, position, size. Uh, the constitutive is established between an object and its constituents and the material involved in its prediction. The telic is associated with the purpose or function of the entity. We can expand this role to a uh, persistent and prototypical property of the entity object, place a uh, person to, like uh, function, purpose, or action. And finally, the agentive quality role refers to the factors that are involved into the origin of an entity. So that's the case of the creator, the artifact, the natural type, and a causal chain of the entity. In this figure, we see that food is represented as formal of uh, pizza. The word eat, the verb eat, is stalic of pizza, since the pizza is made to be eaten. Flour is the constitutive of pizza because it's an ingredient used to make it. And cook and restaurant are agentive of pizza because they represent the person who causes the pizza to come into existence and the place the prototypically sells it. One uh, problem that's very common that is these four relations is that they are too generic. And this has led many works to the proposal of long lists of subtypes for each relation. In the case of FrameNet Brazil, instead of incorporating another list of relations to the database, we use frames in the same database as mediators of ternary quality relations. This addresses both the lack of direct links between LDUs in the FrameNet model and the poor specificity of quality relations. So what happens is that two LDUs are linked to each other via a given qual using the background structure of frames. 
This is a way to make the, the qualia roll denser in terms of semantic information. So this figure provides an example of this implementation in the FrameNet Brazil uh, database, the LU pizza has relation with five order LUs via qualia. So pizza restaurant, cook, eat, food, and flour. If we look uh, at the relation between pizza and flour, we will see that LU pizza uh, has a constitutive relation. Pizza is made of flour with the, this LU, and this relation is mediated by the ingredients frame. So where pizza is the frame element product and flour is the frame element material. So now to test all this, we conduct an, uh, an exploratory corpus study. The corpus is composed by the first season of the Brazilian television travel show, Pedro Pelo Mundo, which means Pedro Around the World. It's a show critically acclaimed as an excellent example of good practice in audiovisual composition. And its, force, its uh, format also configures a novel experimental setting for research on integrated image and text comprehension because uh, in this corpus, text is not just a direct description of the image sequence. The TV format combines voiceover sequences, short interviews, and video clip sequences in a very well integrated script. And it offers rich composition of audio and video. There are 10 episodes of 23 minutes each, in each episode, we see the host exploring a city, a region, or a country, and he highlights its cultural and socioeconomic aspects. And for each episode, the audio transcription generates approximately 200 sentences, which means 2,000 sentences for the entire season. And as we have an average of 6.1 annotation sets per sentence, the annotation of the whole textual part of the corpus should give us about 12,200 lexical annotation sets when completed. So here is an extract of the corpus. Quando a gente pensa na Escócia, a primeira coisa que vem à mente é homem de saia, uísque escocês e gaita de pós. Mas, na verdade, Edimburgo já é uma meca para ciência, arquitetura e filosofia desde o século XVIII. And our methodology was first annotate the audio transcript using the FrameNet Brazil Annotation Web 2. Then once we consider audio as the controlling modality in this corpus, we annotate the frames evoked by visual objects or entities that are grounded on or related to the auditory guidance. And finally, we analyze synchronies and asynchronies between the annotations. Here's an example of the first step when annotator manually annotated the audio transcript of one random episode of the first season. Then to accomplish the next steps, we developed a multimodal annotation module for the FrameNet Brazil tool, Web 2. It runs combined with the original Web 2 and allows the annotator to identify objects and link then, as we see here, annotated uh, for frames, selecting the appropriate frame element evoked. And this step follows the annotation of the audio transcript once the audio is the, the guide. And the same annotator annotated the video in the episodes for the same categories. 
then we contrast the notations, searching for matching frames, and also considering the synchronicity or a synchronicity for the, the frames associated in both audio and video. The timestamps associated to the audio transcripts and the video were taken as the correlational unit between the two modalities. To exemplify the analysis, I present the data and the discussion obtained from the multimodal annotation of one sentence in the corpus, which is in Portuguese. Quando a gente pensa na Escócia, a primeira coisa que vem à mente é o homem de saia, o isque escocês e garca de folha. In English, when we think of Scotland, the first thing that comes to mind is men in skirt, Scottish whisky, and bagpipe. The full annotation of the sentence gave us 10 lexical sets. Uh, and the annotation of the video in the same time span generated four annotation sets correlated. The six lines in gray here present frames found only in the audio and because of the annotation is audio oriented, we did not annotate the frames that were present only in the video for this study, uh, although we plan to include them in the near future. The four lines highlighted show the matches between frames annotated for both text, audio, and video. There is uh, a synchrony in two of them and an indirect match in one of those two. Uh, the asynchrony is due to the fact that although evoked by both uh, the text and the video, the occurrences do not coincide in terms of time. In both cases, the text uh, evocation occurs some seconds before the elements appear visually on screen. And this indirect correspondence between the frames, people annotated for text and people by origin annotated for the video is actually very interesting. The LU evoking the people by origin frame is only men. And this LU does not bring any information on the origin of the person. So the frame evoked it in this, uh, evoked its most general of the people family of frames in FrameNet Brazil. But in the video annotation, the annotator chose to, uh, the people by origin frame, uh, which was evoked by object seven here. So the reason behind this choice is that uh, we see uh, in the video, uh, we see the man in the video right after the audio mentions Ome Josiah, man in skirt. And he's wearing a kilt and playing a bagpipe, which are a typical clothing and musical instrument of Scotland. This combination of factors makes it very likely to infer that what we see is a Scottish person, a Scot. So uh, it makes possible to the annotator to choose the people by origin frame instead of the people frame. And the first question that rises from the sample annotation is how this could be captured by some non-human tagger, or is this kind of annotation supported by the FrameNet Brazil language model? And that's where we get back to ternary quality relations uh, because they provide the answer. First, we can see that uh, a subtype of the formal uh, quill mediated by the type frame connects the LU kilt and size skirt and FrameNet Brazil. Second, a subtype of constitutive quail mediated by the idiosyncrasy uh, frame connects the LU cute to instantiating the frame element uh, Scottish, Scottish, uh, in this frame. And finally, the LU Scottish evokes people by origin frame, which precisely uh, is the one evoked by the object seven in the video annotation. Hence, the Qualia Enriched FrameNet Brazil language model predicts the kind of uh, indirect relation seen in this example. And a system featuring some object recognition, AI could probably identify both the person and the skirt, triggering the inference process. Our conclusions would be that uh, we presented a notation uh, fine grain and uh, uh, to other corpora. It, this, uh, 
it's possible because of the development of a new tool that controls for the synchronicity between uh, different media types and allows for cross-modality annotation. And this yields as an annotation product material that can shed light on the role of multimodality, multimodality in language comprehension. Uh, there are several text annotation tools and several video and or image annotation tools, but they do not control for the synchronicity between different media types, nor allow for cross-modality annotation. Also, none of them are frame-based. So, going multimodal is a way of ex expanding FrameNet Brazil and using audiovisual data and qualia structure aims to improve the granularity of semantic descriptions and aid in LU tasks. Thank you for your attention.